Thank you again for joining me for another podcast. If you are joining me again, and if this is your first podcast, I hope you enjoy it. What I'm continuing to do here is answer questions from subscribers to my free newsletter. People can submit um, questions to me, and then I have them answered in uh, future installments of the newsletter. And I've decided to put um, some of them up on my podcast as well, so that uh, all can benefit from questions. Um, As I always point out, although uh, a question that I read may not be specifically a question that's on your mind at the present time, probably either the theme of the question or the process of going through the question collaboratively will be of benefit to you. Um, Particularly when we're looking at questions, I... uh, um, most of the time, I'm looking at analyzing the thinking for cognitive distortions and then replacing the, the thoughts with alternative thoughts that um, are more positive and more realistic. And the process is called cognitive behavioral therapy. But what it's called is not as important as actually doing it. And so I encourage anyone who listens to this podcast, um, this type of a podcast that I'm doing today is a more interactive podcast in that I hope that you will actually work through the examples and, and, you know, pause the podcast when you can, write the things down, then come back. And uh, really, if we work collaboratively, you'll receive benefit from this. So I'm just going to get right to the question now. How do I cope with a panic attack? How do I stay in the bus, etc., without jumping off and walking home? How do I calm myself down? Okay, so that's the question. So... My response to that is, uh, first of all, thank you to the person that asked this question, but I want to actually um, give this person a name. I'm obviously not going to use the person's real name, even if I did know it, but um, I will assign the person a name. So we'll call the person Jane. Jane's question really deals with two issues. Number one, needing strategies for dealing with panic attacks and anxiety, and number two, dealing with one's anxiety in day-to-day tasks. So there's really two, two components to this question, if you will. With the above statement that Jane has made, um, I would suggest that the thoughts in the background are not that clear. So we have to look a little further before actually doing an analysis with cognitive behavioral therapy. From now on, I'll call cognitive behavioral therapy, whenever I refer to it, as CBT. This is often the case that you have to dig a little deeper before you're actually able to do CBT. So to do so, one should first ask the question, what could be the thoughts in the background? So you're not saying these are necessarily thoughts, but just to start the process, you just ask yourself a simple question. Usually some answers will flow from even making that question. If Jane is concerned about needing strategies for anxiety, this is pretty clear. And I have great news in this regard, because there are many things that Jane can do to calm herself down. Now in this case, further analysis for distortions on this point is really unnecessary because there isn't really a distortion present. Not to worry, I will make some recommendations in this regard at the end of the podcast. So I'm not avoiding that one, I'm just going to come back to that one, but I do want to do some analysis here. So if we look at the second part of Jane's question, it deals with the aspect of conducting day-to-day tasks, such as riding the bus. Question for you is, do you think there might be cognitive distortions lurking in the background of this one? What do you think? There certainly is an overall thought, I would say, lurking in the background that Jane uh, possesses, which is, I cannot take the bus home because I get too anxious. So we can work with this. Now, before continuing, I would recommend that you go to my website at panicattackrecovery.com and get access of the list of cognitive distortions. If you're a subscriber to my newsletter or you have the list of cognitive distortions through other means, because they're... They're not something that's exclusive to me. They're, they're part of cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, and you can get access to them. But uh, you can go to my website and get access to them, so I would encourage you to stop and get them so that you can actually look at the list of distortions and then decide what's possibly present. So I'll just make a very small pause here. And what I'm assuming is, you know, you'll go and 
get the list. But anyways, even if you don't have time, you just want to listen. I mean, you'll still get some benefit from the podcast, but you'll certainly get far more by going through the process collaboratively. So welcome back. (laughs) If you guess that the following four distortions are present, then you're right. Number one, disqualifying the positive. Number two, jumping to conclusions, specific subtype fortune telling. Number three, magnification. And number four, emotional reasoning. Now let's look specifically at how each distortion is actually present and then look at some alternative realistic thoughts. So let's analyze the thinking behind the question. Starting question is, how do I stay in the bus without jumping off and walking home? Okay, well, first of all, disqualifying the positive, as I said, is present because by asking this question, Jane is very likely overlooking many times that she rode the bus or did other similar tasks and she did just fine. So the alternative thought here is that there are many times that Jane has carried out this task or similar tasks and done just fine. So she's disqualifying all those positives by focusing on the negative and saying she just can't stay in the bus. That's really what's implied by her question. Jumping to conclusions, as I said, fortune telling is present. Um, and what to do about that? Well, Again, Jane is predicting in advance that she will not be able to ride the bus or do other similar things. Now, while she may feel anxious, it does not necessarily follow that she will be unable to ride the bus. So, again, um, she's concluding in her mind that she can't ride the bus, but that's just not necessarily the case. Now, I mentioned magnification was the third cognitive distortion present, and... This distortion refers to the tendency to exaggerate the seriousness of something. In this case, while Jane is on the bus and stays in the bus, she may feel anxious. And again, while she might feel some anxiety, she will not die of her panic and anxiety. Number four, emotional reasoning is present. While again, Jane may certainly feel anxious when she rides the bus, keyword being feels, that's the keyword, because it shows us that emotional reasoning. Anytime you say, I feel this way, typically, um, if it's related to panic and anxiety, um, often will be the case as there's emotional reasoning going on. Because emotional reasoning is defined as concluding that things are a certain way because you feel they're a certain way. Or you, you feel a certain way, therefore things must be bad. So, again, while Jane may feel anxious while she's riding the bus, Just because she feels anxious does not mean anything really bad will happen. I've sort of explained why the distortions were present and sort of given you some alternative ways of looking at it. But let's really generate some alternatives now. So I'm going to read through some alternative ways that Jane can process this. And this is very beneficial to go through this process, even, again, if you don't have these particular thoughts at this time. Just because Jane feels that she cannot ride the bus does not make it so. While she may feel anxious on the bus, nothing really bad will happen. Jane cannot know for certain that she will absolutely have a panic attack on the bus. Again, while she might feel anxious, it doesn't follow that she must jump off the bus and walk home. While it is likely that Jane will feel anxious on the bus, if she can continue to expose herself to fear over time, she will be able to work through her anxiety. This exposure will allow her to work through her panic attacks. Also, Jane can continue to learn many strategies that can help her cope with panic attacks. 